So what would you like to draw for today? The sun. Then why did you draw trees instead of the sun? Because the teacher told me that I must draw trees. The family has no criminal record. The family has a single child. His mother is Russian. I didn't see your drawing, Millie. Why didn't you draw anything? Because nobody wants to be my friend. Does it prevent you from painting? Yes. Miss Karjalainen, could you please come visit us again tomorrow? They're bringing a new child to the orphanage. A seven-year-old boy, Ivan Kusinen, allegedly suffering from domestic abuse. Son. Ah. <laughs> Push and fall. Well, just do right. it. This is a trust exercise. Come uh, on. Oh, no? like that. This is a standard procedure. I have explained everything to you already, though it is not my job to do so. It's an outrageous misunderstanding. If it is indeed a misunderstanding, they'll give your son back to you. At present, we are obliged to respond to and act on the information about family abuse. Read it and sign here. We're done. May I tell him? You must go with the police right now. We're gonna get you back tomorrow. Shouldn't. It's against the law. Anastasia! Mommy. Take it easy. Take it easy. Don't be afraid, honey. I won't give you to anyone. You hear me? Step away from the vehicle, please. I'll get you back real soon. But the lady said... She's mistaken. I'll take you back. Tomorrow, honey. Tomorrow! What's your name? You already know my name. Okay, Ivan, you're right. Why should I ask the question if I already know the answer? As for how old you are, that I don't know. Seven. Oh, you're a big boy. 
You go to school? I'm getting ready. My mom is teaching me. Is the person a good lawyer? Yes, I need the best. Thank you, Vigo. Please don't worry, okay? The boy will soon be back with us. You hear me? So, your mommy is the one that's teaching you. Does she give you enough time to play? Yes. Do you keep your room in order? Does your mommy make you put your toys in place? Yes. And if you don't want to put your toys in place, what does your mommy do to you? I always put my toys away. Here, take a look at this. The child care service is the right to keep the child while they are considering the case for 14 days. I highlighted the text in red. If necessary, this term can be extended. Mister, call me Anders. Anders, can you please shorten the case consideration term? No, but I'll try to organize a meeting with your son for you as soon as possible. Believe me, it's not that easy as well. But could we possibly talk over the phone with him? Unfortunately, it is not possible at this point. When will it be possible? It all depends on the child care service now, on their attitude. We can't make any demands, we can only ask them politely. And if your parents ask that you do something and you don't want to do it, do they give you any kind of punishment? I understand that you don't want to say anything bad about your parents. But the truth is more important than nice words. And we agree that you will trust me here, right? I'm telling you everything. And I believe you. Now tell me, do you have any friends? Mm. What do they call you? Evo. Evo, tell me how you play with them. Does your mommy allow you to play with them? Yes. We play inside our house and outside too. Can you tell me what happened to you outside recently? Mommy was dragging you by your hand and you were crying. You see, I know everything. The proceedings, when will they start? It depends on many factors. First of all, it depends on the readiness of the case, on the child care service itself, and there's a queue for such cases. Others wait for six months for their turn. Why were you crying? Did your mommy hurt you? No. Tell me everything, don't be afraid. Why were you crying? Because we were playing by the road. And we kicked out the ball on the road. And you ran out the road, right? And your mommy got afraid you might get hurt, didn't she? You could have gotten run over by a car. Did your mommy scold you? Did she hit you? Please understand. In my position, it is my duty to ask you this. Has the boy ever been abused in the family? Whether physically or mentally? No. Of course not. But she did punish you for it, right? Tell me how your mommy punished you. Tell me, don't be afraid. I want to go home. You had an appointment with Miss Ankunin. She's already in the room. Thank you, I'm aware. You can take as much of my time as you see fit. I will answer all of your questions. She's been waiting for half an hour already. Yes, I heard you. Our boy, where is he now? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello. Is this Timo Kusinan's house? Yes. May we come in? Hello? Yes, good afternoon, Johan. Excuse me, I can't talk right now. I'll call you back. 
We are from the child care services. Due to the fact that there is legal action initiated against you, we need to inspect your son's room and prepare a report. This is in your best interest. I see you're a well-to-do family. And the boy lives in good conditions. What's that? Looks like some tabloid. Right, it is a tabloid. Now why didn't you call me about this? The son of the party leader was taken away and I didn't know? Why was I not made aware? You know, if you're interested I'm in... only interested in my reputation. I vouch for you. And now people will read about this. Can I say something? Do you have any idea how much we invested in I you? I do. I'm sorry. I was in a terrible state. Fine. I'll clarify the situation through my channels. Somebody explain to me why the Campy District is not covered. Why don't we have any of our ads there at all? Mr. Corvisto? Ritva? Yes, Mr. Termine? I asked for jam. Could you please move a little faster? I was working on the list you... I don't need any explanations. I need some jam. Mr. Corvisto? I don't think it's possible to cover the whole city in outdoor advertisements. It is common knowledge that the minds of all people, including the voters, are influenced by television. That's why our party within the framework of the election campaign could focus its efforts on the television medium. Excuse me. Please excuse us for having started without you. Yes, it's a good idea, Mr. Coivisto. Especially considering the fact that each and every party has the same allotted airtime. Oh, Ritva. You've brought the jam right at the moment when I feel I don't want it anymore. I'm kidding. Put it on the table. Mr. Kusinen, please have a look at this. That's what you are to look like from now on, everywhere you go. Punch him for me. Timo. Take a good look at our leader. I'd be much obliged. Thoughts? Does it still matter to you? I just wanted to know your opinion. It's a good smile. With such characteristic European falsity. Well, you are not part of our target audience. Some women from the child care service came by today. What do they want? Not much. They inspected our son's room. What for? They wanted to make sure that the child had been living in good conditions. Tell me, did they inspect anything else? I don't know. I don't think so. You don't know? I was there in the kitchen, talking on the phone with your father. Couldn't you have picked another time to talk on the phone? 
Does that upset you? It's election time. We can't just let people in the house and not keep a watchful eye on them. I'm sorry. I didn't think it had anything to do with your campaign. Yes, Andrew speaking. The Finnish Democrats' party is the political surprise of the year. The party's leader is a young politician called Timu Kusinen, former member of the Finnish Bar Association. His political portfolio suggests his party in a stark opposition to the Finnish nationalists. In other news, new and upcoming restaurant downtown receives rave reviews for their food. Why won't you visit your father? He's sick and doesn't eat well. As far as I can remember, he's always been sick. Mind you, sometimes I do visit him. I sit there listening about Che Guevara, Chile, the island of liberty. Though I do know he has never been to Chile or Cuba or wandering somewhere in Eastern Europe. I have always wondered if all those tales were worth abandoning my mother and me. But I just sit there and listen in silence. I have it written down in my planner and need to visit Johan, but he himself has not come to see me once in 40 years. Forgive him. I have forgiven him. I just can't start loving him. He's got everything that he needs. He gets good care. Is our son okay at the orphanage as well? You've gotten an old coffee here already, haven't you? Get changed and go to bed and sleep. Why haven't you put your things in the wardrobe? Mom is taking me back tomorrow. Hannah, I'm here. Hello, Svetlana. You will stay here for two weeks at least, so tomorrow your things must be in the wardrobe. No kid? Yes, what's your name? Ivan. I always sleep with the lights on at home. Can I have a small lamp? You're not at home anymore. We have some rules in this place that you must understand and obey. And if you're not going to obey, you will surely be in a big trouble. But you'll have to obey them anyway. I'm not scolding you. I'm just warning you to make you understand. Go to bed now. Come on. All right, I'm going to be late. Unforeseen circumstances. No, I don't always have them. Timo! I understand. Good afternoon. I'll explain everything when Excuse I get me. there. I'll call you back. It's a crazy day today. Tuti has been fussy since morning. Doesn't eat anything and she just keeps crying. I had to take her with me. I just can't understand how I'm going Excuse to work. Excuse me. I'm in a hurry. Of course. Let's go. Herta, come here. Excuse me. What water did you pour in the saucer? Tap water. Okay. Go and buy a small pack of bio eggs and bring it here. Mm, anything else? Buy some fresh water as well. I have asked you already to have fresh water in the office. Still water. All right. I'm sorry about this, but it pains me to see these poor creatures suffering from an ailment they cannot describe, and you don't know how to help. How do you think our son feels? He's so young. He's suffering. Do you feel sorry for him too? Anastasia! Please stop overreacting like that to everything. I'm not overreacting, I'm worried. It doesn't help us at all. What? The fact that I'm worried? Well, the fact that you disregard all other problems that are not connected to our son. And how about you? Are the other problems more important? I'm curious, what is more important to you? Your election? My election. 
and the mortgage and the car loan. And my father who suddenly thinks he loves me and calls me every other day. It's all on the table too. I must deal with all of that. And we can't stay at home and cry our hearts out. We need to get on with our lives. I'll call you after I finish the meeting. Can you imagine? I've found another version of this song. The Danes are singing it. I can. Uh, how many do you have in your collection? Fifty-three versions. I'll play for you the version of the Danes now. Could we maybe listen to it next time? How many versions have we listened to already? Well, all right. Take it with you. You can listen to it in the car. A powerful performance. Thank you. In 1973, when I was in Chile, the whole country was singing this song. No, the whole world was. People were still able to unite themselves around an idea back in the day. And they were even ready to risk their life for the idea. But now there are only gray mice, not people. Nobody cares about anyone. Even the children don't care about their parents. Timor's really busy. His election campaign is underway. He rushes from one meeting to another with the media and his voters. I hardly see him myself. I understand. He's really been very busy, Johan. For the last three months? Johan, how is it? Are you finished? You're having your procedures soon. Yes, we're finished. How is my grandson? Is he studying Spanish? Spanish is not our primary concern now. Hello. Why haven't you gone for a walk? The weather is so nice outside. You didn't leave your room at all? There now, you have the light. Well, thank you. Do you want me to help you put your things in the wardrobe? No need. Mom will pick me up today. She promised. Ivan, if your mother comes to pick you up, don't worry, we'll just pack them again quickly. Let's put them in the wardrobe for now. Tomorrow, Aunt Hannah will be on duty. And she'll be angry if you don't put your things in the wardrobe. Let her be angry. Thank you for waiting for me. I don't have anyone else to tell this to, but Johan has been feeling worse the past few days. He wouldn't tell me about it. But his own doctor did. Could you please ask his son to come see him soon? Please, talk to your husband.
I can't even think of how he's doing down there. Don't think about it then, okay? Andrus called. He said that the child care service had received an anonymous letter, and they took Ivan on the basis of that. Can you take this wall down? For you, I can pull down our house and half of the city as well. But why, huh? I built it for the boy. They took Ivan because of it. This neighbor of ours must have written the letter. She hated that wall a lot. And you know what? I saw these women from the childcare service leaving her house. It doesn't prove anything. She did it. All right then. We'll figure it out. Darling, what are you doing? I'm simulating a reality in which her son is with us. Would you like me to help you with that? Yes, I would. There are multiple scenarios of how things will turn out in time and space. We must attract the one in which Ivan is coming back home to us. This is what positive thinking is about. It is based on the idea that we are together. I see. I talked to Anders. He said he was really involved in working on our case. Everything is going well so far. But if you look at the general statistics... I know the statistics. Up to this date, more than 17,000 children have been taken from their lawful parents in Finland. Good afternoon, Miss Laxo. I hope I'm not disturbing you. You've already disturbed me, Mrs. Kusinen. I'm sorry. I just wanted you to know that my husband and I decided to remove the wall which blocks the view out of the window for you. Thank you, but I don't need any favors from you. You won the case. So you can leave your wall standing wherever you want. I'm begging you, please withdraw the letter. What letter? The letter you sent to the child care service. You are really wasting my time now, ma'am. Have a nice day. So you really don't want to go for a walk? Mm -mm. Are you waiting for your mom? I am. <sighs> you know what? When I first came to work here, I thought all mothers loved their children. But then as time went by, I came to realize it was not true. And I had to persuade some mothers to come here to see their kids. They didn't want to. They got angry with me and said I should mind my own business. And I made them visit through the child care service. And when they came, do you know what they did? They threatened to kill me. Can you imagine? Do you know how many boys just like you I have seen? They were all waiting for their moms. Believe me, it's better not to wait. My mom told me she will come for me soon. We don't know when she's going to do that, and whether she wants to do that at all. Let's just be friends, okay? You'd rather have me as your friend. I'm the boss here.
Miss Laxo. Can you hear me? Miss Laxo. We're sorry. Please forgive us. We have always treated you with profound respect. And I really hope that this case has not alienated us or made us enemies. Miss Laxo, I'm begging you, please withdraw the letter. You do know how much I love my son, Ivan. Miss Laxo, open the door, please. I just want to talk to you. That's all I need. Miss Laxo. Miss Laxo! Darling, were you trying to take down the wall? Save your energy. Tomorrow I'll bring the workers and they'll demolish it. Maybe you should have a good cry. I can't cry anymore. Be strong, my darling. Be strong. Everything will be okay soon. Stay with me a while. May I sit down? Shall I read you a fairy tale? Let's just keep the light on. Of course. How could I read with the light off? Do we have a deal? All right, here it goes. Once upon a time there lived a young man who grew up in an orphanage. He was poor and hungry every day, so he traveled far and wide in search for food. He went on and on, and in the evening he was tired and hungry in a dark forest. Close your eyes now. And suddenly he saw a bird of the forest struggling in a trap. He was happy and he said, Now I can make some stew for myself. And the bird suddenly spoke to him with human words. Don't kill me, O oh traveler. Please, I beg you, let me go. So he let the bird go, and the bird said to him, I want to thank you for my freedom. Now I'm going to make your wishes come true. Any wish at all? Any wish. <laughs> uh, hold that. Take it easy. Come on, give me the ball. Come on, let's go. Yeah. You're gonna kick give it. Give me the ball. Let's go. Ow, why did you hit her? What's wrong with you? Come on, come on. Can you give it to her? Come on, Wrap guys. it up, boys. Launch time.
why are you here? Are you spying on me? No. It's just nobody wants to play with me. With you too? I don't want to play. What do you want to do then? Nothing. I just want to get a magic bird. The one that can make any wish come true. There is no such bird. There is. This bird can make any wish come true. Who told you that? How do you know? Nani told me all about it. You only need to let it out of the cage. Will it really only make one wish come true? I don't know. Can I be the first to make a wish? Why you? I want to make a wish I too. I promised her first. Only don't let it go immediately. Why are girls always the first to get everything? I want my wish too. Children, what's going on here? Anastasia, I didn't write any letters. I just told the child care service that I saw you dragging your boy home, and he was crying. Oh, they've done it now. The Russian wife of the Finnish Democrats' leader is tearing down walls. They want to kick you out of the election campaign. What are we going to do? You need to get a divorce. Only on paper. The people have already got the taste for it. The media will squeeze everything out of the story. We'll make you a hero of our time. But I love her. I can't live without my son. I'm not saying you should leave your son. You'll get a divorce and custody over your son, which is the most important thing. And you will be able to restore your marriage, if you want to, after the election. How do I explain it to Anastasia? With words. She's a psychologist by profession. She must understand that this is a game of politics, and this is how it's played. Mark, I'm not going to get a divorce. Was it your idea to take the bird? You're lucky it's my shift today. I just said that if we let it out, it'll make our wishes come true. You read the story to me. I did. But the bird can only make one wish come true. All of us had only one wish. Which is? To go home. Still awake? You know that I can't sleep without you. 
Will he have supper? I had to return to work. Mark convened an emergency meeting earlier. We had supper and breakfast there. We aren't going to have time for that in the future. And you won't have time for us either. What are you saying, darling? I wish I could spend all my time with you. Really. I miss you so much. Today, we need to move away from very liberal slogans. Finland has already enough freedoms. What we need is law enforcement. Mr. Kusinen and I worked out some new premises, and he'll be reading them out loud now. Timo, are you with us? Excuse me, Andros. I'll call you back. I hope everybody realizes their personal responsibility for the whole election campaign. I want to emphasize the whole election campaign. And not just a part of it. What we need are results. Good afternoon, you didn't call me back. My wife is more distressed. She's been reading scary things on the internet about juvenile justice, child trafficking, abuse, and orphanages. Timo, hold on a minute. Don't get upset. I've been calling you, but you're always busy. And when I call you back, you're still busy. But I have other concerns as well. Yes, you're right. I'm sorry. I didn't call you back because I was waiting for certain results. You're a sensible person, and you understand you'll have to sue a government system. And this system is interested in taking children from their parents. The pretext doesn't matter. I'm sorry if I'm not comforting you, but I want you to understand that we are facing a very complicated situation. I hope to have some good news for you by this evening. Just try to relax and distract yourself from these concerns. Pay more attention to your wife. I'll call you later. Will we have champagne too? Anything you want, darling. We will set aside our problems. Hello. Here you are. Thank you. We could move to another table where it is quieter. No, everything is okay. When will the surprise happen? Let's start with a champagne. Thank you. The surprise will be for dessert. Excuse us, Mr. Kusinen, for the intrusion. It's just that our political debate has come to a deadlock. It's all right. 
but I don't want to discuss politics tonight. Isn't it a rule to always listen to the voice of your voters? Of course, I wouldn't argue with that. <laughs> Do you really think that social programs for families must become a top priority? Uh, family as an institution is becoming a thing of the past. Its function is logically transferred onto the state. Uh, doesn't your party support the principle of the progressive development of the nation? Our party supports everything that is progressive. But right now, my wife and I just want to have dinner. Well, I think a politician must be brave enough to give straight answers and not avoid them. At this moment, I'm not a politician, but a hungry, non-progressive family man. <laughs> so then, what do you think about the family institution overall? In our times, it's nothing but a relic of the past. Do you agree? Ma'am, I do agree that a woman is always right. If she says it's a relic of the past, a relic of the past it is then. Excuse me, do you have kids? Anastasia. Anastasia. Anastasia! Hold on a moment. Let me say what I mean. Anastasia! You should have said everything at a table instead of groveling before your voters. Wait a minute. Did you really want me to have a serious discussion with those two idiots? Let go. It hurts. I want you to protect your family. I want you to bring our son back home. We have a meeting with our son tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to see our dear Ivan. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Ivan. If you don't want to see your parents again, you can always tell us to stop the meeting. Nobody will force you to meet them. But I want to. Please read this carefully. Make sure you follow them so we can avoid any complications. What complications? The child care service is very meticulous when it comes to meeting with their kids. It's best not to question their rulings. We'll let your parents in now, Ivan. 
but no crying, or we will immediately end the meeting. Do you understand? We're ready. All right. You may come inside now. But let me just say that the child has adapted to his lifestyle in the orphanage and he likes being here. Don't say anything that could traumatize him or anything that could foster negativity. Okay? Please come in. Oh, I Mrs. Kusinen, please talk loudly and clearly so that we could monitor what you're saying. I didn't say anything. I just said hello to my Ivan. Don't argue. Mrs. Kusinen, just follow the rules. How have you been? I'm fine. How is it here, son? You like the food? It isn't good. I mean the food. We'll take you back soon. We'll have a picnic, and then we'll fry sausages by the campfire. We've brought you your textbooks. I... I have... marked some... lessons here. You can study on your own, right? I'll try. Nastya. Would you like to take a video with Mom? Would you like to say anything? I don't feel like it. All right, then. Mrs. Kusinen, this is our last warning. Please control yourself. Nastya. Don't cry, man. Nastya. We're ending this now. Parents, please leave the room. How come? We just started. Man, we need more time with our son. He is currently under the protection of the child care services. Don't cry. It's not allowed. The meeting is over. You are abusing your authority. This is unlawful. <laughs> if you fail to comply with us, this will be our final meeting with Ivan. No need. Ivan. Here. It's for you. Go. I'll see you. Go on. Ivan. Ivan. Come on. Go now. Let's go. Go. Mom! Daddy! Nastya. Nastya. Easy. Easy. <laughs> They're both sadists. Those two are just doing their job. They deal with these sorts of cases every day. That method probably works best. You're justifying them? Nastya, I'm just trying to be reasonable here. Okay then. What's their reason for taking the life of our son and all those other children in their cold hands? Instead of people who actually care like their mothers and fathers, no. what's their reasoning? No, I'm just saying that they cannot get emotionally involved. Do you understand? I'm his mother. I will be emotionally involved in this. Did you behave yourself at the meeting with your parents? I didn't. Why did they stop the meeting? I don't know. You cried? No. You're not going for a walk tonight. We have to sort this thing out. I have a request. 
I'll soon have to account for the funds spent on the election campaign. A headache. Have a look at our contracts. A handful of the budgets written in there are absurd. I understand this used to be your specialty, yes? Take a look, and once you're done, tell me what you think. And keep a low profile. Do you have any doubts? Doubts always come with the responsibility for this amount of money. Okay, settled. So tell me about your ratings. There has been a slight decline in popularity. I think we should strengthen our solidarity with the smaller towns. And why have you not done that already? Yes, we have found the security footage where the boy is seen running away. Ivan. Ivan Kusinen. Half Russian. Hm, I, I don't know about the other half. We can find yes. him. Yes. Thank you, we'll be waiting. I will discipline him myself. Why don't you find him first before anything else? Should have kept a closer eye on the boy. I'll just get out for some snacks. And I don't care about that. Just write down a report. I've checked most of them and compared them against current market prices. I didn't see any problem. I'll finish in a few days. Timo? Yes? Did Vaco Yarvinen manage all these contracts for us? Yes. Please sit. Your friends, right? Your classmates. Tell me about Yarvinen. How was he? Did he get a job? Maybe. I don't remember. I see. When are you leaving? I'll be meeting voters and having interviews tomorrow until the next day. Then your contracts... What about the small towns that you mentioned earlier? What will you do about it? Under the present circumstances, I can't go. And why is that? You know, my situation with my son. I'll put together a team to handle the towns. It shouldn't be an issue. Do you have anything for me, Mark? Based on the information I've gathered, the investigation will go by the book. We are not to expect any friendly gestures. So your presence here, it won't change anything. And here I was hoping that you would help. And here I was hoping that I wouldn't have to solve all of your problems for the election. Excuse me. Mr. Kusinin's guests are waiting for him. Sir, would you like some tea? Put it here. Go on.
You're Mr. Kusinen? Yes. This your son? Yes. What happened? He was handed to us by a tram driver. Your son didn't have a ticket. Would it be acceptable for me to pay the fine? I swear there won't be a second time. My son didn't mean to do what he did. It was just an accident. We'll send you off with an invoice for the toll. We'll let you off with just a warning. We need to see your ID. Yes, of course. This is seven, over. Hello? Switch it off. We'll know if it's important. Our connection here is bad. Can we take a picture with you? Of course. Thank you. Have a nice day. You too. Thank you. Daddy! Hello? Are you home? Almost there. Did something happen? What makes you think that? Just because I'm calling doesn't necessarily... Yes, it's Ivan. Ivan? Our boy ran away. He's sitting in my office for the time being. On my way. Nastya. Honey? Nastya, Anders is here for us. Hello there, Anastasia. We need to get Ivan back into the orphanage. Let's just pretend we have had a long discussion of the situation, argued, couldn't agree with each other, and so on. But to sum it up, you understand that the only option available here is to convince your son to go back to the orphanage. If the police find out that Ivan's here, or at your abode, they will have the authority to charge you with kidnapping. Then any chance you may have of coming back to you will all be gone. Oh, Mr. Kusinen, I need to speak with you. Yes, pardon me. And for your husband's election campaign, the situation is quite... I'll bring him to the orphanage myself. Ivan... will return to the orphanage. Mom, I don't want to. I want to stay with you. Can I, Mommy, please? Be patient, my dear. Just have patience, it won't be long. It's just my will get you back. The fact that they took your son away from you, most likely a defamation scheme. It would be in our best interest that you leave the premises at once. The sooner you leave, the better. I'll deal with your kid. I should see them off.
Everything will be fine. It's crammed. Well, I let hold on there. Shake my hand. Come on. Okay. We should use the stairs. Addis will tell the orphanage that you're on your way. You should pull yourself together. You're not supposed to be here. Thank you. What if I gave Ivan a night lamp? He gets scared when it's dark. Not a problem. He's got a night lamp. Are you Russian? From Karelia. But I'm actually Finnish. Believe me, orphanages aren't as bad as you think. I understand. It's bad, but it has its uses. I'm not used to speaking in Russian. Good thing you understood. Your Russian isn't as bad as you think. Anastasia? I would like to have your phone number. Just until everything is sorted out, perhaps I can write you about your son. I'd like that. And don't worry about his escape. I doubt he'll suffer any repercussions. Good afternoon. My name is Maria. What is it? I'm from the Russian Mothers in Finland group. Did you write to us? Yes. May I come inside? Yes, of course. Please come in.
sorry I haven't taken out the set for a while, so would you like something more substantial? It's okay, I still have a train to catch. I don't have the time for pleasantries. Please sit. I didn't come here to encourage her to upset you. I came here to make sure that you understand. There will be no justice if you don't do anything. They will not give you your son back. We must fight to ensure the safety of our kids. How? We know some journalists that are willing to help us. We'll take them to the Russian embassy. From there, we'll attract the public's attention along with the human rights organizations. I can call a good lawyer. They will return him. They cannot charge us with anything without evidence. They don't need that anymore. The Child Care Service has usurped the right to represent the child's interests. But of course none of them is interested in what the kids want. They'll do what they want. Do whoever they want. As long as they get the money. Is that what you think? They treat the kids like products, like toys. And they sell them to the highest bidder. Do you understand? The state grants a huge amount of money for the kids. We need to act. The sooner the better. I can contact the press, as early as tomorrow morning. Did they take your child from you too? My daughters. They're twins. So did you get your daughters back? They're with a foster family. I think they're staying somewhere north of Finland. Most of the details are confidential, they say, and it's been two years. Just how do you live on? How do you wake up and get on with your life? With hope. Each day is a step closer to them. Nastya? You shouldn't be speaking to her. I know what they're all about. We don't need any of these Russian mothers or human rights organizations. The Finnish don't like it when someone interferes. No, this is not about me being elected. They would only destroy our reputation in the court. They will deliberately take away our son just so they can prove their independence. Yes, I'm sure. I'll be home soon. Don't do anything till then. Well, I'm sure you heard what my husband said on the phone. I'm sorry. Finnish men have forgotten what their roles are. They make all the laws, but... They are the ones breaking up families. And your husband? That man dumped me. I have to catch the train now. I appreciate the ride. No, I had to thank you. I wouldn't have sent you that letter if I had known. Head straight for the church and say a prayer for his son. Your violation of the rules of conduct caused great psychological distress. Thus catalyzing his escape from the orphanage. Leaving the child without a guardian, therefore compromising his safety. The child care service is left with no other choice but to prohibit further meetings with your son until the trial. But I don't understand. We didn't violate your rules. Our meeting was only five minutes long, barely even enough for me to embrace my son. Miss Ryano, we would like you to clarify. We're not obliged to give clarifications. You will receive the decision by post. His mental condition is at stake. We can't afford having you to complicate things. The boy will be treated by a professional. And in such situations, parents tend to be rather biased. Ivan? What is this? Are you okay? Who did this to you, Hannah? She said it's because I ran away. I should sit and contemplate on my actions. 
You've got to be kidding me. So are you telling me that a boy wanting to live with his parents is a problem? Master, come This is outrageous! You are violating our rights. If you wish to talk about your rights, you should speak with your lawyer. Ms. Raelo, your actions are absolutely unlawful and inadequate to the circumstances. This cannot possibly go well for you at the court. Our primary mission is to ensure the safety of our children. We'll go see Mr. Makina now. You'll tell him everything. Are you injured? He saw me already. And he didn't do anything? Mm-mm. Nobody will hurt you again while I'm here. I promise. Ms. Saima Rylo worked with a family where she was suspected to have abused a young eight-year-old girl. But there's been some overwhelming evidence that proves that the girl is okay now. She died not too long ago. They will be holding an investigation against Ms. Rylo. Are you talking about the loss? You think she's being too cautious? I think there are a lot of factors at play here. There are stumbling blocks everywhere I go. Even just to arrange your meeting, I had to... Well, not throw away my dignity, but something similar. I think there are more reasons behind the current situation with your son than we may have been aware of. You must consider all our options. Can I get a report detailing the work you have done so far? Of course you can. My secretary will send you all the corresponding details. And now you had better take your wife home. I don't think she's feeling all right. Thank you, Anders. I made the report about the violent behavior exhibited by Ms. Hana Korhonen. I hope that you will take the appropriate course of action. Otherwise, I may send a copy of this letter to the police. Sit down, Svetlana. And I would like to know your position about how the children are being punished. I don't have a particular position. We're here to provide the kids with due care and proper attention. But the kids have to be disciplined. And we each have our preferred methods for that. And yet, if anyone here decided to abuse their powers, then they will obviously be punished. But do you know? Miss Coronin's been here for a decade. And through the decade, she has always been in accord with the children. But her punishments are too extreme. Svetlana. I know this is new to you. You don't have much experience working with kids, do you? Should I be going to the police? No need. I think we'll sort it out ourselves. You're not in trouble, Ivan. What are you holding? Go take a bath. I'll go fetch some clean clothes. Are you done? 
They care not looking. Now I'm going to change the sheets. I'll duck you in comfortably and you'll sleep, okay? If you want, we can continue reading the tale of the magic bird. I want to know how it ends. Do you? Yes. Then I will read you a bedtime story. <sighs> Give me a hug. You okay? Do you already? Well, I wanted to stretch for a bit. Mm. A bonafide cologne for a bonafide macho man. Happy birthday, dear. Mm. Oh, I, I forgot. Sick old donkey I am. Mm, I need to clean the room just uh, in case the guests come. I'll handle it. Just relax. You don't smell this. You should drink it. One time, we're in Cuba. Mm, the hotel we're staying in ran out of alcohol, and we were with some big shots. They were ambassadors, but I think Fidel was, uh, I don't remember. I would suggest having a birthday party while enjoying the fresh air. I have everything ready for a picnic, so you'll tell me everything about it here, hmm? Well, why don't I tell you all about it right here? Because your stories never end. Oh. Take this. Your favorite. Oh. <laughs> you shouldn't be doing that, you know. <laughs> I hope nobody will come so we don't have to share this with them. <laughs> It's Svetlana. She said Ivan's doing all right. I don't understand why she is still in contact with you. I thought they were not allowed to communicate with a child's parents. She's doing it because... Hello? Hello, Anastasia. Can I talk to Timo, please? Hello there, Martha. Um, he's not here now. Would you like to say something? I don't know if you remember, but Johan's celebrating his birthday today. Maybe Timor could find some time to come and visit him. Talk to her yourself. Why? It's Johan's birthday today. You should visit him. I literally don't have any time today to go down there. I'll just call him. 
Hello, are you still there? Oh, I understand. I'm not stupid. It's just that. Maybe Dimor could... Spare some of his time for an old man. Hello? Hello, Masha? Can you hear me? Hello. <laughs> Happy birthday! Happy birthday. An unexpected guest. How did you remember? Oh, how could I forget? Here. It's from me and Ivan. Why, thank you. <laughs> Can you believe they showered me with cologne today? <laughs> <laughs> and have they showered you with sweaters? No. This is from Timo. Mm -hmm. Let's try it on. No, I'm fine. All right. I have some fruit here, too. You know, Timo, his schedule's killing him lately. They're right to call it running. <sighs> he doesn't even walk anymore. Elections, am I right? So is he... not coming? Timo asked me to uh, give you his regards and said he would definitely call you. Thank you, Anastasia, for your attention. I really mean it. Don't thank me. I'm just here to bring these. Please, sit down. Why not have some booze with me? Let us drink till we pass out drunk. Here. I want you to have this. Read it at your leisure. Cheers. To dear Ivan. I wish him the best. And happiness too. May he forever retain his trust in his family. And may we never hurt the boy with our lack of empathy. Yes, our fear is the most repulsive thing in the world. I have always been afraid of something. Now I... Now I'm getting what I deserve. Sorry. Now let's drink. To my grandson. Who we love. So dearly. May the light that we see in his eyes remain. And through this light, may we become a little better. So why are you late this time? It's not like you're always busy. Come early next time. I will. Why aren't you on time? Because I went to greet him happy birthday. I appreciate it. I'll call him when we're done here. Good afternoon, oh, Andrews. We're really sorry for arriving late. It's all right. Sit down. You should be rejoicing, good sir. I have just learned from an informant that recently a teacher was kicked out from the orphanage where Ivan is being held momentarily for inadequate attitude towards children. And behind the words inadequate attitude, as I understand, lurks the word cruelty, which is a huge advantage for us. We could sway the court to our side with this information. As such, I would like to discuss how we will handle this specific information. Violence in privately owned orphanages is a common thing nowadays, but it's very hard to prove because the children's testimonies are not valid inside the courtroom. Even the general practice of having the children... Ivan! Ivan! Where are you? Come over here! 
come to mommy. Come to mommy. I'm in the car. Very well, drive safe. I'll be home in about... I'll be late. Now listen, don't go anywhere close to the orphanage, you understand? Mark is going to organize a municipal inspection there. Remember to stay on the side of the law. Russia is a bad influence on Vico. He signed outrageously corrupt contracts. I can see a lot of rollbacks with him, for sure. Well, you know what they say, birds of the same feather. I'm not sure I understand, but I'm guessing there's some sort of insult in there. Hello there. Ah, Mr. Kusinen. I have just been contacted by the Child Care Service regarding Mrs. Kusinen's recent violation of their ban imposed on visitation. Obviously, this will be disadvantageous in the court. It's my duty to warn you about it. If it happens again, we'll lose the right to take this matter to the court. You've been advised. Why did you go to the orphanage? I just told you to stay away. What did you hope to accomplish there? Can you think? Do you understand what you are doing? Answer me! Idiot! Every day you give me the show of breakfast for three people and then you just go and ruin everything! What kind of scenario are you really trying to attract here? Tell me! Now we can't see our son because of you.
Vladislav Kodakovsky's detective agency. Please stay on the line. Please. It was difficult to contact you. I'm calling you from Helsinki. I just don't know where to start. You can start with the reason you decided to contact us, ma'am. Anders? I don't think they'll just give us our son back, so I want you to smuggle him to Russia. Does your husband know about this proposal of yours? No, I haven't told him. How did you learn about my agency? Newspaper. So tell me, can you help us out? How did you manage it? Yes, I'm still listening. Yes, of course. Thank you, Anders. Yes, I am sure of it. This is my final decision. Understood. You can find our email address on our website. Write us an email and wait. We'll send you a detailed questionnaire to fill out as soon as possible. Oh, honey! <laughs> <laughs> it's about the proceedings. This nightmare will finally end in two days. Which kind of church do you attend? A Russian Orthodox one. 
Have you suddenly gotten all religious? I've no time to explain to you. But you can come if you want. No, thank you. What will I be doing there? Repent? If nothing to repent of? I'd rather focus on the things that are more important. You're making me dizzy. Could you please sit down? Mark, I'm tired of waiting. The court hearing is in two days. I have to get this inspection done right away. I am not omnipotent. An orphanage inspection cannot be planned in just one day. Please understand. Certain individuals will take a series of consistent steps arranging everything that needs to be arranged and then after a week the inspection of the orphanage will push through. Can't wait for another week. Demo. We live in a very civilized country. We will need more time. Have you made your decision about the divorce? I'll decide after the hearing. Are you telling me you're going to wait for the final court decision before you make up your mind about the divorce? Don't tell me I've invested my money, time, and effort in a stupid idiot like you. You think I don't know what I'm doing. The child care service return rate is 4%. Four out of one hundred. So you know what you're doing. Are you already prepared if you lose the court trial? Of course. Andrus has already found a divorce lawyer for me. Oh, Virgin Mother Mary. Come and save my son, Ivan, and call for him under the thick cloth of your motherhood. Let him live in the fear of God, the Father Almighty. Help him to be obedient to both of his parents, and be respectful to other people. Pray to the Lord, my God, and your son, lest he give Ivan what he needs for his salvation. I willingly offer my son, Ivan, with all due respect, over to the care of Jesus Christ, my God, and your heavenly protection, O oh, my virgin mother. Amen. Please have mercy on my little boy. Are we still together? Of course, my darling. Of course we are. Hello, Mr. Kusinen! Sorry, we don't do interviews. Please, give us a minute. Do you think you will win? I'm very positive we'll win. My wife is not guilty of anything. Sir, a moment. Sir! Good morning, Ivan. Please sit down. Why won't you get seated? Please sit on the chair. The chair is dirty. Okay, just stand then. Why did you sit down? You told me to sit in this chair. Do you always do what you are told to do? I don't know. It's okay, Ivan. You can say you don't know. You are not expected to know the answers to all of my questions. Let's change the topic a bit. Let's talk about your parents. Ivan, we need to talk about your parents right now. You may proceed. Please, Mrs. Kaiser. The boy must be protected from his mother's influence at all costs. He needs urgent psychological attention from a specialist and apparently treatment. Your Honor, may I ask a question in regards to what Mrs. Kaiser just said? Yes, you may. Please go ahead. You would like to see the actual psychologist's report to understand what urgent psychological attention Mrs. Kaiser was talking about. May I see this document? 
Unfortunately, Your Honor, the said document is still not available. The date of the proceedings was scheduled unexpectedly. I would like to present to this court the earlier unknown and unreported facts. As you may conclude, Your Honor, Miss Loxo, acting a witness here, admitted having only seen the child cry, is clearly stated here in this report. The prosecution has no direct and concrete evidence that the child has been abused or mistreated by his mother. That being said, Your Honor, one month ago, Miss Loxo lost the case against the Cousinins, in which she claimed compensation for moral injury caused by the construction of a climbing wall on their land plot. We could not possibly consider her testimony to be unbiased, Your Honor. I would like to respectfully draw the Honorable Court's special attention, everyone here, to the fact that very recently, teacher Hana Koronin was sacked from the orphanage where the boy is staying for professional impropriety. We fully understand what improper treatment of children really means. That's why it is not really safe to leave the child at the orphanage. The risk of possible violence is high. Ivan Kusinin needs to be brought back to his known family immediately, where he receives the best love and care possible since the day he was born. Here are the copies of the documents. This court will go into recess. The court will deliberate to consider the new circumstances of the case. Are your parents punishing you at home? If you did something wrong? I don't know. Don't be scared, let it out. No one will hurt you here, I promise you. Were you forced to stand in the corner or get slapped? I really don't know. I believe you're just terrified of telling the truth, am I right? I guess I have no choice but to leave you at the orphanage until you remember everything. Perhaps you simply don't want to recall how you were punished before. Is that it? It's not relevant to the case if there's direct evidence of abuse or not. What is important is that we have information regarding the mother of the child's mental instability. The accused exerted relentless and constant pressure on the witness, Ms. Laxa. We have her statement in the case materials. We also have existing video recording of Anastasia Kusinin, who is aggressively attempting to dismantle and demolish a concrete wall on her land plot which is prohibited by law. Additionally, we have valuable information that in 2011, Anastasia Kusinin consulted a psychologist on her own because of her struggles with depression. How come I'm not aware of that? It was a very long time ago. I didn't think it was that. Everything is important now. ...during a visit with her child and because of that incident, she was permanently banned in the orphanage. Nevertheless, Anastasia Kusinin ignored her mutual arrangement with the child care service. Here's the actual report from our staff member. The accused Anastasia Kusinin has clearly demonstrated her complete inability to cooperate with the child care service. And I would also like to emphasize the fact that the child's father, Mr. Kusinin, is always busy at work and is unable to care for his child properly. And lastly, Your Honor, I firmly believe that the child must be strictly secluded from the aggression and psychological inadequacy of his own mother, the accused. With all due respect, may I have the floor, Your Honor? I'm sorry, but your turn has already passed a while ago. It's not entirely bad. There is so much noise about young Russian children being taken from their parents. I'm just hoping that the judge wouldn't want it. I hope so. Excuse me, is there any other exit here? I don't want to meet with the media right now. Over there. We're almost there. Are you alright? I'm just a little bit dizzy, but I'm totally fine. I can't fully understand the decision the judge just made. In Finland, judicial decisions come by post. We'll find out everything soon. You know, my most favorite food is 
because the, the small is just very, uh, well, the, the way they run it, it's, it's very In Finland, the law is very tough on mentally unstable parents. And of course, failing to comply with the child care services is a guaranteed 100% sentence. Divorce is your only option if you want to keep your son. That's the only way. I'm telling you that you need to act immediately. The child care services always have order lists of children from all private orphanages. They'll give your child away as soon as the decision appears. As soon as they find out, it will be much more difficult to get child custody, I'm sure. I can't believe this is all happening to me right now. Here's the business card of your new divorce lawyer. They'll be a huge help to you. Oh, Virgin Mother, the Lady of Heavens, forgive me for I have sinned. Forgive me for always begging you. In the hour of my strife and my misery while turning away from you in the hour of my happiness and well-being, forgive me for I am a sinner. Virgin Mother, bless and save my beloved son. Bestow thy protection upon him. Thank you for making the effort to come here. Don't worry about it. It's my pleasure. Please, take a seat. Mm hmm Coffee? N no, thank you. Your one and only job is to convince your wife that your divorce is a total formality. We don't want her to face the court and take a confrontational stance. Or even worse than that, we don't need her to start taking measures in retaliation. As far as I know and understand, you don't need this right now. You know that she loves your son very much. That is advantageous for us. It'll be easier to work with her. Your main argument is that the divorce is the only way to save your son from the grip of the child care service. And that fact is correct. As soon as you get divorced, I guarantee that we will restore your parental rights immediately. I hope that's all clear. Will my wife be able to see our child after all of this? Sadly, no, Mr. Kusinen. You must understand that I am left with no other choice but to take a tough stance against her. In court, I need to prove that she has a psychological condition. And I need you to help me with everything you've got. After all, it's highly unlikely that they will allow her to see her child. Now could you please tell me anything about any of your wife's actions or words that she blurted out that the court might find weird, inappropriate, or inadequate? Anders told me she was demolishing some wall. I hope that he's not talking about the Berlin Wall. That's a very hard wall to break down. I've already read and reviewed your incoming case. I'll be frank with you, I don't like your case. I have no intention of taking it. Then what am I supposed to do right now? You can contact somebody else. Or solve this problem within the legal framework in court. What legal framework? It's a child trafficking business. I know all about your track record. Answer me, please. Why are you refusing to help me? It's absolutely not a matter of what I want or don't want. This is my job. And in your case, there are too many risks. Most importantly, your son is not a Russian citizen. That's a problem. It's impossible to take him across the border illegally. If I take up this risky case and fight alongside you, the cost of my services will have to increase extensively. I'll pay you. You haven't heard the price yet. I'm going to pay you. 
with my husband's card. All right. I like this approach. Send me a photograph of your son, and then I'll start preparing the documents. We'll contact you very soon. Excuse me for a second. Someone's calling me. Hello? How about going out for dinner at some lovely restaurant tonight? Bad idea. We need to discuss something that is very serious. Do we have to eat outside to discuss it? We don't. But we don't have much time. We need to talk about a very important matter. It's for the sake of our son. I must start the divorce proceedings immediately. It's the only way to bring back our son. Trust me, it's only a formality. I basically need your consent to do it as quickly as possible. Ivan can be placed in a foster home at any given time. I understand. This must be done before the election. All right, then. Please stop it. Believe me, I'm doing this for the sake of my son. For our only beloved son. Then do it. I think he just told her. I just have to confirm it myself. Yes, Mark. Dropping by? I left already. I feel bad for you. What did Anastasia say? Will she comply? Good afternoon. I was born and raised in this amazing city. This is my home. My country. That's why I'll speak at the moment as a citizen of Finland. A citizen who values the law above anything else. All of you guys already know what happened to my family, about our beloved son. My wife is accused of abusing my child. Sadly, that is terrible news. But what truly happened? How did this all happen? We all have questions. Different cultures. Totally different ideas about what upbringing should entail. We need to look into this and sort it all out for good. But the child cannot wait. The child is not to blame. He must have someone by his side. That's why I finally decided to get a divorce. Now that's a good boy. I don't know about Russia, but in this country, you cannot beat or punish children because you're irritated or angry with them. In this beautiful country, every child is protected by the government. And I've come before all of you to say that I'm against any violence or unlawfulness, whoever its source might be. It's really hard for me to say it, as I'm talking about my wife. My Russian wife. Finland and Russia have gone through various stages and levels of relationships. But we have always wanted to be good neighbors. Equally empowered neighbors. But we should never allow anybody to dictate to us how we are to raise our children. Because this is our country. They are our children. And it's our rules. The decision just came in. They have taken her son away from us. We don't have a son anymore. Don't you understand that? You gave him to them. Why did you give him to them? Why? Why did you do it? <sighs> Your wife is asleep now. She will be asleep for a few hours. I gave her a fairly strong sedative. I'm quite worried about her state, Doctor. <sighs> Stress, nervous breakdowns, emotional suffering. Of course. Do you have any recommended prescriptions?
She doesn't require any serious medications. She's not like any of my patients with fatal diseases. Don't worry so much. Just fresh air. More exercise. I guess hardly anyone can do it, huh? I mean, the no worries part. You okay? Call my son. Right now, please. Okay, I'll call him. But I'll call the doctor my first. My son. Please, my son. Call my son. Call him. Call my son. Please. Okay, I'll call him. I will call your son first. My son. My son. Call my son. Be quiet, or else I'll send you to the cellar. You may scream there all you want. All normal kids are behaved and obedient. What's this whole show about, huh? You will go to a foster family whether you like it or not. That will be the decision of the court. What are you kids looking at? Go to your rooms now. I don't know how to address you. Pardon me. Father Vladimir. Father Vladimir. I prayed to our Virgin Mother for my son. Then I thought I was praying for my son. Then I just realized I was selfishly thinking only about myself. I hate myself. Everyone thinks about themselves first. People are weak. Weak in their own faith, weak in their deeds. God shall forgive us all. They took my son away from me. Took him away forever. How can I continue living now? The very first step is to ask yourself, is this my fault? Sincere repentance. Prayer shall give you strength. A mother's prayer lifts you up from the bottom of the sea. What am I going to do now? Do what you think is right. God himself will show you the way. I couldn't talk to you over the phone. They are now checking every employee. My son. How is he doing inside? You have nothing to worry about your son. He blended inside very well. He became friends with everyone. The staff love him very much. Does he know already? Yes. 
You can't imagine how mature and reasonable your son is about everything. He took the decision of the court just like an adult. Trust me, I grew up in a foster family myself. And we both know very well that your son is resilient. He just... moves on. Do you think that's the case? Are you serious? Yes, I do think that. Could you please give this to my son? And please tell him that I will do what I promised him to do. No, I can't do that. <laughs> I'm begging you. I need to go. I still have work to do. Thank you. Hello. I've come to read you a book, dear. Do you mind? Okay, I have an idea. Why don't we go somewhere very far from here, on an adventure? Do you want that? I want to go home right now. You're a big boy now, and you must understand that you won't be able to go home anymore. I think it's better that we stay together rather than send you to a foster family. What do you think? Could you give your baseball cap to a girl from here? She's very sick right now, deadly sick. She already had her head shaven two days ago. And she wants your baseball cap. My daddy gave it to me. This very sick girl doesn't have a father. And when we leave here, I'll buy you a new baseball cap, I promise. Would you like to move in with me? Can I bring this cap with me? Of course, darling. As you wish. What special holiday are you talking about? The great special holiday, the day of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. I can't say that I am much of a believer. I think it's the very first time that I saw a Catholic nun wearing our traditional clothing. I'm very amazed. It suits you, though. Are there many Catholics right now in Finland? About 10,000 individuals. Of course, it is not much compared to other non-Catholic countries, but Finland was once a Catholic country, and our church is trying to revive people's interest in religious matters. Who else but the children, God's little lambs, should we turn our gaze upon? If you allow the kids of this orphanage to go to our church to celebrate, we will surely teach them a lesson in divine love and joy, and then we'll come back, play games with them, and give them some toys they want. Well, okay. I can't see any reason not to allow the kids to go to your church. It is not an only kids holiday, right? My employees and staff can participate too? Yes, of course. You shall be blessed with Our Lady's grace, but first and foremost, with all our deepest love and gratefulness, we would like to congratulate you with all of our heart, dear Mr. Mackinnon. Well, all right. You will take the kids for half a day on Sunday. Is that good? I will wait for you after at the orphanage for their return. May God show you his divine mercy and grace. Thank you for your amazing gifts. You know, we're having a big problem with our outdoor activities recently. Volunteers have gone lazy. I don't know why. They used to take the kids fishing, at the very least. These poor children.
Peace be with you. Hello, sister. Kristoff sends his regards. Who's Kristoff? How many Kristoffs do you know? I'll wait inside the bus. It's safe to talk there. I've been instructed not to discuss any details with you. I need the advance payment you promised right away. All right, but I need to know something. Don't hide things from me. Here, this is for liaison. Don't use it to make any calls. This is to only receive messages. We'll contact you right away if we need an emergency meeting. You need to get Ivan out as soon as possible. Otherwise, he will be transferred to another orphanage or a foster family, and we won't be able to find him anymore. God will show the way. Hello. Happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you as well. Have a safe trip. I have a message for you, but be quiet. Look here. Do you know her? This is the first time I'm going to see. Good morning. Good morning, Anastasia. How are you doing? I'm doing just fine. I called you to say goodbye. To say goodbye? Are you leaving or something? Apparently I am. It's good that you're leaving. Change of scenery. I guess I won't... be seeing you. Anytime soon. I guess you're exactly right. Are all the children here? I think one child is missing. Don't worry, everyone is here. I just counted them one by one. We need to wait for the end of the Mass. The boy you're looking for won't go anywhere. Please listen to the Word of God. Have you seen Ivan anywhere? No. Hey, come here. There's no bus in the parking lot. Stay here. Everyone should know that right now is a very good time to form an alliance with the Swami Women's Union. It's a very serious organization with cooperative voters and followers. They have a very profound agenda. But let us face the truth about our situation. Who else could we form an alliance with? Tell me, who will need our lovely ideas if we are thrown overboard by our enemies? Excuse me, I...
It's already done. What will we do now? Now we have to patiently wait. Here's my phone number. Take it. If everything works out, I'll use it in Russia. It will work out. Everything's according to plan. All right. They have my son now. Hey, easy, easy. No need to cry. Easy. As soon as you get to St. Petersburg, get a Russian citizenship for your son at once. The Finnish government will demand that the boy be returned immediately. I'll make some calls and our people will meet you there and help you. They will organize a press conference. It's very important right now to attract their attention. I really wanted to tell you. Please forgive me for Christ's sake for making you disappointed before I was scared. It's okay. I understand. Bless you. I will always pray for you, so that your beloved girls can come back to you. We have information that you just filed an application to adopt the missing child Ivan Kusinin. Yes, but does it matter now? The child is missing. We need to start looking for him. But can we consider that he was tactically kidnapped by you, an interested party in adopting him? No. Why would I kidnap an innocent child if I know I can adopt him legally? As far as we are concerned, there are more applications in the child care services than the children currently available. There are private orphanages, exclusive ones, which win tenders for children, and consequently receive huge amounts of government funding. So what? I think it would be very difficult for you to compete with these private orphanages and get the child you want. The children were brought to a Catholic fest with the permission of the orphanage director, Mr. Makinen. I'm not the one who decided to let them out. Wouldn't you agree that this whole movie-like story with the Catholic nuns looks quite implausible? A masquerade of sorts or something? But it worked perfectly. I'm sure his Russian mother has planned and orchestrated this kidnapping. And if you don't stop her, she will bring the boy to Russia. So far, we find it difficult to share your statement, ma'am. She did it! I'm sure she kidnapped him. Why are you not searching for him? <laughs> Bring my precious boy back to me. Don't come near me. What's wrong, my darling? What happened? First, you must promise me. Promise what, my darling? Promise what? That you won't take me back and send to the orphanage again. Of course I won't give you back. Come here. Come, my darling. I will never give you to anyone, do you hear me? I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry.
Mr. Kusinen, do you know the whereabouts of your wife right now? Maybe at home. I don't know. I don't watch her all the time. And we are getting a divorce. We have new information that she is traveling towards the Russian border. Where do you think she's going? Mr. Kusinen, did you hear my question? Yes. To where? Which city in Russia do you think your wife is headed to? I don't know. She doesn't have any relatives left in Russia. She had a mother who lived in the Urals, but she died two years ago. Have you already spoken to your wife today? Show me your phone right now. I see you withdrew a big amount of money from your account today. What's that for? My own money is a personal matter. Your son is under government's protection. Your money is a personal matter before your son's kidnapping, that's a fact. You and your wife are the main suspects in this case. Do you understand? It makes no sense. I'm running at the election. Why would I cause such a scandal? Is this withdrawal from your bank card related to your wife's activities? I needed the cash for my sick father's major surgery. Your documents, please. You've got a call. Speaking. Got it. Please step outside the vehicle and open the trunk. Open the trunk. Where is the other lady? She already left. She will sail by sea on a giant ferry. She's been afraid of the ocean ever since she was a child. Is she afraid of swimming? Yes. But she told me she will be thinking of you and she won't be afraid because you're such a brave boy. So don't worry about her anymore. Have you ever traveled by plane? No. No? And I don't want to. Actually, it's going to be fun. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Thank you. Next? Could we go there by sea? What? Could we also go there by sea? Going by sea will take too long. And planes are not scary at all. Don't be afraid. And if anyone asks you anything while we're here, just keep quiet. Aunt Katarina I don't want to. will speak for you, okay? I don't okay? want to. Let's go. I don't want to. Come on, come on, come on. I don't want to. I don't want to. It's all right. I don't want to. Let's go. Let's go. I don't go. want to.
Well? Nothing. Let's get going. Choose one. I understand it's difficult to choose. Let me help you then. I will choose. <clears throat> it's good. Can you please show us your passports and tickets, ma'am? I demand that you release me immediately. You're in no position to make demands. A child, a Finnish citizen, has been kidnapped. And we do have the rights to detain you here. For as long as it's necessary to assist the investigation. I'm tired and thirsty. I'm planning to talk to the media and tell them about all of your unlawful actions. Talk to the media when you're back in Russia. Or don't they have crappy democracy over there? I'm a Finnish citizen. Take off the handcuffs at once. So you can start waving your arms at us again. Boy, are you okay? Are you not feeling well? He can't talk. I'm not talking to you. Well, he can't speak. He's mute. Excuse me, officer, we need to go. Boarding to our planes closes soon. But is the boy okay? He's okay. He's just afraid of flying. Tadush, drink this. You must do it for your mommy, please. My son, drink this. Go on. Can we go now? Wouldn't you like to stay in Finland after the kidnapping of your son? Go find him. He is your son. I'm going to visit my sick mother. I'll be back soon. Your mother? She died two years ago. So where are you going? Motherland. No, you can't do that. I left my glasses, you read it. On this day, God's blessing has been bestowed on the true believers. What does this mean? Hello? Got it. We must let this prostitute go. Some big shot minister is already calling the higher ups, asking for the grounds of her detainment. Everyone is losing their minds. By the looks of it, her will is already broken. It's more like she doesn't give a damn.
Hello. I'm with Russian mothers. Maria called me from Finland and asked me to meet Ivan. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, on this day, God's blessing has been bestowed on the true believers. Sorry, I forgot to say. I was told Sophia was supposed to meet us. Yes, she's my fiancé. She couldn't make it. Okay. Nice to meet you. Are you Ivan? I'm Andre. It's my pleasure. How was the flight? Hello? Hello? Mom, I'm waiting here. Will you come soon? Hello? Honey... I'll be there. Very soon. My little boy. You promised you won't give me to anyone. How are you, immigrant? Do you like it? Mm -mm. Our city is beautiful. Don't be sad now. Welcome to your motherland. Do you think you can solve all of your problems by turning your phone off? Drinking in self pities for Russians. We don't have time for that. May I come in? Over here. They let Anastasia leave. The child was not found with her. I thought it would be better if she wasn't here in Finland. It's easier to work. I need a drink. Hold this. You must hold a press conference immediately. You are our star. Everybody wants you. TV debates in this evening. Russian mother kidnaps a Finnish citizen. Well, are you happy? I propose a toast for the reunification of the mother and son. Johan, drinking is not good for you. Let's smoke too. I still have some good cigars from Cuba, left over from my birthday.
I can't let you smoke a cigar. I'm sorry. Why do I hear so much sorrow in your voice? It's such a happy day today. We'll smoke later. Outside. Martha, could you please check the Russian channels? What news are they broadcasting? The child care service, having taken over the right to represent the interests of the child, seeks to deprive you of your children and distribute them among private orphanages. None of them cares about the child's needs. Why is it happening in your view? It's business. Children are sent to tenders as if they were some goods. An orphanage is bid for the children under the tender. Everyone makes a profit. Why are the children so valuable to orphanages? Because the state allocates huge funds to orphanages for the children. There are also powers that can stop juvenile justice, which has spread like cancer all over the world. What powers? Who are they? You and me. The parents. Anastasia, your husband remained in Finland. Are you planning to go back there? Will you ever return to Finland? No, never. Vico, hello. Check St. Petersburg. Anastasia kidnapped our son. Tell her to contact me as soon as possible. My son is a Finnish citizen. Explain all the consequences to her. St. Petersburg is a big place. You know that. I think she's staying at the Grand Hotel. I saw her giving an interview from there. The interview must have been pre-shot. Most likely she left already. Could you go to the hotel and check? Did you hear what I've said? She just kidnapped my son! My sincere condolences. It's just, I don't see the point if you can just call her. You know, I still have the advertising contracts you drafted. And I haven't told Mark what I think of them so far. Andre! Hello? <clears throat> How are you, hero? I'm good. good. Thank you so much. No worries. I'm just doing my job. Hello. Please meet Sofia, center of Bulgaria. Nice Being to my meet fiance you. is a part-time job. It was her who organized this press conference. Andre, you stop plan. praising me. You did so great at a press conference. Well, I hope you'll get the Russian citizenship for Ivan very quickly, yes? And Andre here will help us with that. I'm in the same boat with you. I'm done playing its Russian mother, so now I'll work as an investigator. Okay, handshake. See to it that she goes home. Remember that you need rest. Mm -hmm. The doctor's orders. Mm -hmm. But I have to arrange the protest first. What protest? Listen, do you want me to put you in the hospital just to rest? <laughs> no, I want this. Mm. Mm. I've managed to find only one flat. It's sold, but it has a kindergarten nearby. Thank you so much. I think any apartment will really do for us right now. Do you happen to have a twin sister? I doubt it. Would you like to book a room? Only if the room includes you. Unfortunately, I am not able to accompany you. But I can call their security instead. Maybe they can accompany you. I'm sorry. That was a bad joke. In fact, I'm looking for a good friend of mine and she's staying in your hotel. What's her name? Anastasia Kusinin. Two yous. A seven-year-old boy's with her. Anastasia Kusinin has already checked out. We're on air in five. Straighten up your backs. Camera one. We're live. Good evening. The pre-election debate is in full swing. And our guest for today, the known party leader of the Finnish Democrats, Timo Kusinin. Good evening. And the leader of the coalition party, Aki Ripinen. Good evening. I would like to remind our viewers that today is the last day of the debate. As you know, tomorrow you will be having the so-called pre-election silence. I now give the floor to you, Mr. Ripinen. Thank you, Yuta. Mr. Kusinen, your party has declared several times that Finland needs immigrants. That the immigrants will solve the demographic issues in the country. Yes, that's true. Why do you think that we would need immigrants to raise a declining birth rate in this country? 
Thank you for your question. I don't think it's right to divide our nation into Finnish and immigrants, to divide people into those who would need the state support and to those who would not. We are all citizens of Finland, and I believe our main aim is to strengthen and preserve our big multinational united family. We will organize a protest in front of the Finnish consulate, so I may not be able to answer the phone very quickly. If anything happens, call Andre directly, okay? Thank you so much. Your Andre is really great. He cares about you a lot. <laughs> yes. This is his first child and is really worried. We don't know the gender yet. During the ultrasound, the baby turned on its side so we couldn't see. How long have you been together? Two years. Andre was handling the case of bringing Vasily back from Norway, my older son. Do you want a brother? I do! <laughs> you know, foreigners think that Russian people don't help each other. But actually, it was Russians who helped me, and they still do. You, for instance. You know, I agree with you about the Russians. But I'm from Ukraine. <laughs> Please tell me how you are going to keep the so-called United family together. If you yourself failed miserably to keep your very own family together. Mr. Ripinen, may I remind we are having a political debate now. I now give the floor to you, Mr. Kusinen. It's okay, I'll answer Mr. Ripinen. You know, my family is not only my wife and my son. It's the baker who sells bread to me every single morning. It's also the bus driver who takes my son to kindergarten. It's also my neighbors, who are always ready to help anyone in need. It's the people who live in the same city as me, the same country. My country is my family, Mr. Riepenen. 20-minute break. Please be back on time. Hello, I received calls from this number several times. Hello, Mr. Kusinen. It's the director of the retirement home speaking. I called to inform you that your father had had a stroke a few hours earlier. He was taken to the hospital in critical condition. I'll head to the hospital. Hello. Hello. Here you are, my dear. You're such a good little helper. Are you hungry? Uh-huh. Let's cook ourselves some dinner. When is Dad coming? Dad will finish his election work first. He's still busy. Did you quarrel? What made you think that? Well, Dad hasn't called us. Well, you know how busy he is. Don't you love him anymore? Come to me. I love your dad very much. It's just that we really did quarrel. It just so happened. But you'll make up? Will you make peace? I just have no idea how to do it.
I saw you speak at the debate. You're a good politician. But a bad son? He was waiting for you. Till the last moment. What do you mean, till the last moment? He's fallen into a coma. Will you leave us alone? Your presence here won't do him any good now. Come on, spit it out. You should have come earlier. I should have. There he is, our youthful and almost curly demigod. From his fearsome Olympus, he is looking down on the world submitted to his will. Our ratings has flown up like a delicate deer. Okay, deers can't fly. Like a falcon. A proud falcon high in the skies. Mark, I have done what you asked me to do. Yes. And even more, you were great. Now we need to set meetings and interviews to solidify our success. All right. I've already done what you asked. Now I'm going to do what I think is the right thing to do. Timo. Timo, hold on a bit. Timo. Timo. What is it? Just what kind of determination do you intend to show me? I'll fly to St. Petersburg. I'll go there to see my son. Have you finally lost your mind? St. Petersburg? You'll waste five months of work. Have you been drinking? No. Listen to me. No. Listen to me, I understand. I know you're in a difficult situation after losing someone very dear to you, but... Now's not really the time. Mark. I have let you down. I'm sorry. Hold on, has anything else happened? Do you need my help? No. Look... F okay, fine. I'm giving you one day. I mean, it's a freak show. But I'm begging you, don't do anything silly in Russia. Timo, you have one day. Hello, Vico. Hello. I'm flying to St. Petersburg. Get ready to meet me. Well, warm greetings. Yes? Daddy? Son? Is that you, Sonny? Daddy? Oh my goodness, it's you. Where are you calling from? 
I am in our new apartment. From your new apartment? Uh, what's the address of your new apartment? Dad, can you please make up with Mom already and come with us? Of course, honey, of course. Just tell me the new address. I'll find about the address and send it to you in a message. What a clever boy. I'll be waiting and I'll come at once. How's Mom? How are you? What are you doing now? Tomorrow I'm going to a kindergarten near the house. And Mom has gone out to arrange it. Dad, come to as soon as possible. Mom told me that she still loves you. Me too. I also love you too. These are copies of the contracts you drafted. My analysis is there too. Why have you come here? I have come for my son and I really hope you'll help me. Arrange a business trip to Helsinki. We'll go in this beautiful diplomatic car of yours. What do you mean by arrange? I can't possibly go to Helsinki at a moment's notice. I have some work to do here. Yes, you have some work. For now. Just read this carefully. The moment I rest my head, I'm like knocked out. It's beating. Listen, it really is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello? Got it. Yes, I owe you. <sighs> Until the comrades fall under. All right, bye. We've got company. Timo Kusinen is here. Her husband? Uh huh. What are we going to do? You're not doing anything. You will stay in bed. I'll handle it. The doctor appointment! <laughs> What's so funny? And take the elevator when you get home. <laughs> Andre, we'll live on the second floor. Even so, those are still stairs. Mm -hmm. I don't want you getting dizzy or twisting your ankle there. <laughs> you might give birth there. <laughs> Andre, you're obsessing too much. I just want you to give birth. Under your personal control, I know. I promise not to give birth without yeah? you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be off. Have you talked to your son? I don't know how to tell him. He has always been afraid of the dark. I see. Hey! Jam! Come on, move faster! Come on, faster, faster, faster! All right, there you go. We're going to fly. Fly round and round and round we go. And now we run. Everything is ready for you with the latest technology. See? There's a lamp, so you'll have some light, and a pillow to feel comfortable, very comfortable, fit for a prince. Sonny, you must get into the trunk. It won't last long, just ten minutes, while we're crossing the border. Is that okay? Is that okay?
Your suit is ready. Thank you. Have a good evening. Hello, Mark. You're flying to Helsinki tomorrow morning. I booked a business class ticket in your name. I haven't seen my son yet. You must be in Helsinki tomorrow. You don't have any options. I hope you understand that. Wow! <laughs> Identity check. Do you have your passports with you? Have you forgotten me? What do you mean? I do remember you. Last time I saw you, it was six months ago. You promised to take me somewhere to the tundra. You approached me for the past, but I live in the present. Did you read that in, in a, a magazine, book? in my car. Have you seen a Finnish man somewhere here? There he is, in the restaurant. How about a drink? No. Are you free? Well, I'm leaving. Oh, no, you're not. Detective Safranov, you may consider yourself detained. Thank you, honey. The whole place looks like a drugstore now. Come here. Mom, may I not go to the kindergarten tomorrow? No, sweetie. You must absolutely go tomorrow since it's your first day. But I don't want to go. You know, when I was a little kid, I didn't like going there either. My mother worked in the ambulance service. It was always busy. My grandmother always picked me up. But since she's already old, she would forget. Or would be late. I would sit alone there in the room, waiting. I dreamt that one day my mom would come pick me up, and one day I made a wish. A wish? I promised myself that if I sat silently, my mother would definitely come pick me up. What happened next? Then we went for a walk outside. Everyone was running and shouting, and I was sitting there all by myself. And then suddenly I saw an ambulance pulling over, right by the gate. Was it your mom? Yes, honey. That was my mom. You have betrayed your wife. And now you're playing the victim game with me. I'm not a traitor. You can't even imagine what it feels like to lose your son. I'm working on a case. The case of a woman named Sophia. She lived in Norway. And one day, she found these pictures on her computer of her husband, molesting their four-year-old son. She went to the police with it, and they accused her of mental instability and denied her custody. The case materials then disappeared from the police afterwards. Her son went back to his father. Her two-year-old son was then sent to an orphanage. Then she stole him from the orphanage and escaped to Russia alone by car through all borders. Well done. But why are you telling me all this? I'm just stating facts about these situations. Why she's under my protection now. Why your wife is under my protection. And your son. My son said he needs me. He called me. He wants to be with me. Don't interfere in my life with your sermons. It's my personal business. You're my personal business now. You're going back to Helsinki tomorrow. And if you don't, I will make sure that you will be in big trouble myself. I can start now, with those call girls. I believe you are seriously abusing your powers here, detective. You understand Russian well? Why? I do not give a damn what you believe. If you don't fly, you're going to jail. Got it? That's what they call the Russian lawlessness. Well, something like that. I prefer to call it the Smashing 
sort of justice. Toys being played outside. Who said you could take them out? Let's all collect the toys quickly and bring them back. Ivan, why are you sitting all alone here and not playing? Do you hear this? Vasilisa, Irina doesn't want to play. Go and play with Ivan. He has nobody to play with. Come on. Hello, Andre. Good afternoon. It's Anastasia. My husband knows our new address. What do I do now? How did he learn the address? I don't know. I guess Ivan must have sent it to him. He wanted us to make up. Where is Ivan? Uh, in the kindergarten, not far from here. I see. Go pick up your son now. Give me the address of the kindergarten. All right? Uh-huh. What's your name? Cool cap, can I try it on? Hey, are you deaf or something? Ivan! Daddy! Daddy! Son! My son! Just a second. Just a second. I don't know, he was here a moment ago. Don't worry, he won't go anywhere. I saw him right here just a second ago. Timo! Timo! Anastasia! I'm sorry. The traffic police made me move the car from that spot. We'll be at the border in two to three hours. Dad, where are we going? Dad, where are we going? We're going home. Home, son. Don't be so nervous. Your job is to execute orders from your superiors. You have an order to inspect a diplomatic car, so why don't you just do that? I'll get into trouble for this. If you don't obey my order, you will get into so much more trouble. Is that clear? They'll be the ones to handle our Finnish guy. He's not going anywhere. He's an art turf after all. I can't leave without mom. She's going to worry. It's going to break her heart. She will be joining us soon. Very soon. She's not coming. They'll put her into prison there. 
They won't do that. Everything will be fine at home. We'll go fishing. Grandfather is at home. Dad? Mom was sick all day yesterday. She even said that she would die without me by her side. Did you change your mind? I don't know. If you return to Finland with your son now, you'll become a national hero with all the ensuing consequences. Your dream will come true. Exactly. Hey, champ! Get over here! Look inside. Everything is prepared for you already. Cutting edge technology. There's a lamp in there so you'll have some light. And a pillow, for your convenience. You'll travel like a prince, comfortably. My son. My son. I think you and me, we'd better go home together with Mom. I don't want to break her heart, either. What about my business trip, then? I risked my life to arrange it. You know what? You can go. We'll get to the city on our own. You idiot. Andre, it's them. Do you need my help? No. I don't know. I'll wait for you here. Have a good stroll. Yes, my darling. Sweetie! I need to go to Helsinki now, but I want to come back here. I want to ask you something. Don't file for divorce yet. Why not? We have a marvelous son. I don't think there's any us anymore. 
Perhaps you and I could talk more about how we should go on. I want all of us to live together! Loading now. This is the last bus. Rejoice. I'm a father of a son. <laughs> a son, you understand? <laughs>